How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am well. I appreciate you talking to me about this. I thought it was just so beautifully done. And, and this is a couple that feels easy to feel for and root for. So when you first read the script and were introduced to these characters and their story, what were the emotions that you went through with them? What, what most, most touches you about their story? I mean, if I'm completely honest, I think um, when you're looking at material and thinking about whether to get involved in a project, um, you haven't really quite as gotten as far as to sort of dig into the emotions and the story. It's more, I guess, a bit more calculated than that. You're reading the material for whether it's something that you like, whether you like the dialogue, whether it's a sort of subject matter that you kind of have a, a response to or a, a, an affinity with. Um, so again, that's the first first sort of thing that happens. I also listen to or read the article, listened to um, the podcast, which is a reading of the article as well, and got the kind of vibe of that. Um, the New York, uh, New, uh, New York Times article itself. Um, so that's where I started, and, and and I just yeah, I was interested in, I guess because it's a mixture of obviously we're doing a dramatization, but it's um, it's uh, nonfiction in its um, when it was published, and so it's you know re someone this couple's real life. So that's inherently uh, drew, drew me into it. Um, and yes, yeah, so and then it will really, it was later on once we started making it that I was how to sort of engage in, yeah, what the, what the journey of this couple is, you know, obviously, um, uh, uh, the sort of the more, the more complicated aspect of that being her diagnosis and, you know, what, how to sort of, how to do justice to that, um, yeah. Because so much of this is you and Sophie, what did you most enjoy about working with her as a scene partner? What do you think she brought to the, all of this as an actor herself? She, uh, really, um, yeah, one of the best actors I've worked with. She is really authentic, very honest about stuff, um, and really kind of insists that it kind of happens in front of the camera and can't fake it, um, which is a really galvanizing, energizing thing to be around. It's exciting. Um, we also, yeah, we had a similar way of working. We were both interested in digging into the script with uh, Kieran and John in the sort of week or two leading up to it, um, talking about possible changes or, you know, or whether there was stuff that we could cut and and they were open to that too. And so that side of it, I, I definitely find that uh, helpful as a sort of way into this, you know, into material where there's a bit of a, there can be some push and pull, some, some conversation around um, the actual material itself. Um, yeah. So it was a, I mean, you never quite know when you head into these things, but it was a pretty happy collaboration. I think everyone, all of us were, Kind of pulling in the same direction. We were interested in making the same kind of show, and totally interested in um, the same things. I think I'm a fan of John Carney's work. I, I loved Sing Street and Once. Mm, How familiar were you with his work? What do you think it is that makes his work special? Um, well, Once was certainly a, a, a film that I had really admired. Um, I mean, having worked with him now, um, I was really struck by there's a kind of freewheeling quality to how he shoots. That he really does sort of, um, he doesn't, it's not too controlling. He really um, keeps it to a minimum in terms of your sense of being filmed. It's quite light touch. And, um, and he you know, didn't do huge amounts of takes. So he seemed to really have confidence in us as performers. And yeah, so he would really let things play not intervene too much. Um, and I think, I think that's partly why his work has quite a fresh, um, authentic, almost sort of improvisatory quality. Um, he, yeah, that sort of light touch, sort of non-invasive. And, and that particularly paid off, you know, obviously we're working with two little girls playing our kids. And um, yeah, he was very good at also keeping the kind of, 
techniques of what we were doing uh, in the background so that they could be kind of quite relaxed and quite free. Having done shows like Game of Thrones and Outlander and The Crown, you've been on some sets of the largest scale. What mm -hmm. most stands out to you about being a part of productions of that size and scale, especially when compared to something so much smaller and more intimate like Modern mm -hmm. Love? Yeah, that's partly why I wanted to go and do Modern Lover because I've fancied a change of pace and this felt, you know, obviously it's modern story, uh, a very different kind of show than something like The Crown, less, less overtly dramatic. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I like them both, but um, it was very nice to go and do something a little more intimate, a little smaller, um, where, you know, the smaller team... Um, quicker kind of conversation around it. What do you remember about your experience on Rome, which was sort of one of the earlier big, large scale TV productions mm -hmm. before it was as much of a thing as it is now? Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, one of the sort of early trailblazers of the, you know, a lot of the shows that came after. Um, very happy memories. I was pretty young. It was my first big American TV production that I'd done. Um, yeah, and I remember, you know, um, I remember, again, going and talking to the showrunners about the script on that one, too, and being sufficiently uh, young and naive, uh, you know, not to know any better, and no one told me to bugger off. So, um, yeah, so they, they, they were very kind then, and I've, um, yeah, I, I, I've also continued to be really I mean, it's amazing how many people continue to reference that show as both an important show, but also maybe a, 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 an influential show um, for some of the stuff that came after. You're also someone who's had a, an extensive career uh, on the stage. You're an experienced stage actor. Mm. What do you think that, how has that influenced and affected your work as an actor in front of the camera? Do you feel like that's had an effect on how you perform on camera? Undoubtedly, and I, I, it's not it's not clear cut. I think it's um, all these things contribute, but yeah, it's definitely where fundamentally I learned to act. It's where a lot of my early career was. It's where I made a lot of my mistakes, cut my teeth, you know, got it wrong, then learned to get it right. And um, so, in that sense, it's hugely formative, and and also continues to be because I mean, one of the th interesting things about this is you get a very very direct feedback unlike screen um, where it takes months for it to sort of actually hit an audience or for you to see it in a, in a live uh, theater, it's very clear, you know, what people's response are. And so there's, there's a, an immediacy to that, which means that you grow pretty quickly through doing that. Uh, there's sort of no hiding place. Um, and that's really, you know, I think really good for actors to do. It keeps you like fit. I think. And so that's, that's definitely my feeling about it. And, um, and so that's why, uh, you know, I continue to go back and, uh, and continue to do it. Yeah, it's definitely the thing that seems exciting and terrifying in equal measure. So <laughs> you, there can be terrifying moments. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me. Good to talk to you too. Take care.